tonight for the tune hope you're all well cheers for stopping by so early got quite a quite a crowd in for for Zor. Mm, excellent well if you didn't know i am beardbo from the northeast close to close to newcastle just outside northumberland area if you want to be precise and uh we're getting heavy tonight folks with none other than Zor. Hope he's looking forward to it, because I know I am. And uh, he's been a good friend of this channel. He's appeared numerous of times over the past year. Um, always helps and supports with. And uh, yeah, I hope he's enjoyed his, those three songs, by the way. Uh, those three songs was River of Bones, Final Lilt, and Destabilize. Okay, bad. Great. Let's bring... Kenny on, shall we? Because we don't want to see me, we want to see that handsome man. So let's uh, let's get up to it, shall we? Kenny, where are you going? There How's he it is. going, bro? There he Good is, to see you, man. Kenny, <laughs> look at that handsome face. How are you doing, pal? Oh, dear, man? <laughs> can everyone can just someone confirm who was watching live? Can you hear? Hello, everyone. Can you, there. can you hear Kenny? All right. Hey, one, two. Oh, well, it seems all right. It seems all right. Yeah, yes. Right. I've gotten a thumbs up from the wife. So, oh. we're, we're good. We're good. Can't go wrong. Oh, so, Kenny. Yep. Welcome to Let's Get Heavy. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, no worries whatsoever. Glad, glad about it. Like I say, we're doing this in black and white. I know you like to have a black and white theme, so I thought, let's go black and white. Yep. And Got to go post-apocalyptic monochrome at all times man and it and it represents the tune as well so <laughs> oh yeah who uh, uh who are, i'm not i'm not going to mention who uh just in case there is any manchester united fans out there uh one two notes today so <laughs> sorry oh it's newcastle when did they uh <laughs> they did i the beat the beat manchester united two note <laughs> well <laughs> sorry sorry any manchester united fans in in the chat but uh <laughs> anyway, uh, so we always like to do these interviews, get to know more about the, the artist, because this is just yourself, it's just a solo project. Um, yep. So I would imagine, just in case no one hasn't have guessed, where do you hail from, sir? Uh, we hail from Scotland. Oh, nice. Uh, so Scottish not weather. far from Northumbria, only like two hours from Newcastle. Nice. So we're not complete aliens, we're, we're only <laughs> just up the road, man, you know. Ah, it's soon as a boot right, as soon as a boot right. Excellent. And how long has this project been a thing for? Uh, I started Czar uh, around about, you know, at the height of the lockdown, uh, literally when you couldn't go outside. Uh, you know, I've been a bass player for a long time, and... It doesn't sound like a very good time to start a band or a project, but it just clicked to me and said, I really want to do this, man, and, and I'm just going to pull the trigger and go for it. And uh, so far, the response has been pretty wild, considering, you know, it's quite a short amount of time that Zara has been in, around, so like two years-ish. I start a band in lockdown as well it's it was probably not a not a bad idea you know keep your head your mind busy do you know what i mean because oh yeah lockdown was a pretty shitty time let's be honest you know what i mean um yeah was the... to, to do what you've done you know what i mean the, you, you've done absolutely amazing with the three tracks that you've done absolutely bangers i absolutely love it 
Um, thanks, Ted. So thanks no, for all your support, man. No, no, honestly, mate, it's, I enjoy doing this at the end of the day. Uh, it's what we had a bit of crack on before we went live, and uh, I, I love doing this at the end of the day. It's, um, I mean, I, I kind of play a musical note to save my life. I can strum a few chords and stuff together. Do you know what I mean, like, like, like <laughs> deep purple and stuff, smoke on the water, and black Sabbath paranoid. Um, but to do what like, you guys do, um, and other bands who I've had on this channel as well, you know, what I mean, um, it, it's just my way of giving something a little bit back to bands who continuously give me something on a daily basis because there's always someone, a band, a solo project who is bringing something new out that I absolutely dig. So, and Thanks, it's, so it's just Thanks. my way of giving something a little bit back to Thanks, bands. Thanks, So. Aye, there's no need for thanks, man. I thank I'm you because you keep releasing, the, you keep feeding me endless tunes. So I should be thanking you guys, not you thanking me. <laughs> uh, don't worry, dude. Don't worry. You know, as I say, <laughs> we will, we will uh, meet at some point, and there's yeah, no exactly. restrictions on there or anything like that. So we can excellent party a little, I guess. Sweet, I love it. So, what made you want to pursue music in the first place? Kenny. Uh, I started playing music when I was 12. Uh, the classic, or could you know, what happened there was it was first year at school. I started to listen to music, but I'd never seen or played an instrument. I've never even seen a guitar in real life before. Hmm. And, uh, you know, there's, you imagine like the, the tables are all surrounding a drum kit in the middle and everybody sits around. Everybody gets a shot, you know. And I played the drums and everybody said, you've had a shot of that before. You 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 seem to be playing that perfectly. And obviously I was like, no, like, I've never played a guitar or a drum kit in my life, you know. And obviously, uh, you know, the parents' night thing, months later, uh, my dad comes home and said, we're watching Kerrang, what we used to do years ago. And he says, would you like a bass guitar for your birthday? And uh, that kind of changed a lot of things because I said yes. And uh, from there, obviously, music's been my number one thing. Uh, obviously, all the way from my teenage years, I studied music in my, my teenage years. I left school and went straight into music performance. Uh, and then after that, when I was about 18, I've been in play playing in bands ever since. Uh, and obviously, I've been involved in numerous other types of music industry stuff as well not only being a musician although i'm a musician first and foremost but i dabble in music journalism for example or oh, nice. other business stuff uh, and obviously i'm the core business person for czar as well so yeah that's the consolidated uh version <laughs> well, we might have to talk off offline sometime then because i'm not actually a professional journalism or anything. i can't even call myself a journalism journalist sorry um i literally just just off my own back sort of thing, do you know what I mean? So you uh, did so well and thanks for building such a great community. Uh keep going, man, it's great. No, thank you, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So kind words. I love it. So yeah, I think you've already pretty much answered my next question. But uh first instrument you picked up, I'm assuming that was the bass, yeah. Properly, yes, but technically the first instrument I ever you know touched without knowing anything about music was actually a drum kit believe it or not as i say in the wee school episode but officially bass is the first instrument and i've got to include played bass for a couple of years and then i was nuts in the guitar so i became through time a multi-instrumentalist and of course in czar i'm a multi-instrumentalist <laughs> uh so yeah it's pretty cool yeah sweet so out of all the instruments that you play which do you have a favorite I'd probably say bass because bass. simply because it's that's what what's well, twenty years to the date that I got my bass guitar. Uh so yeah. <laughs> I'll say bass because as you can see there's four or five behind me and there's only two guitars, so bass has got to be it, yeah. Yeah, sweet. And uh curious just to what type of gear you use? Bass, oh. guitars, drums, etc. Yep, uh, so my main bass at the moment is a Spectre 4X, in fact I will show you, 
Oh, yep. Yeah. Show off them instruments, lad. You may have seen in some oh, social media yeah. posts. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see because of the, the black and white that we've put on the on the filter. The top there. So it's basically like a Thunderbird four string bass set up in drop A. Hmm. That's the tuning that we use primarily. Uh, this has been my, got our main bass since I was 19. It's a Fender Eridine. And I bought this because I was nuts and Duff McKagan. So this that, has served me really well. That is nice. There's others as well. And of course, if you were curious to watch guitar, it's the Jim Root. It is the Squire model, but it's been upgraded with bare knuckle pickups. That is, that is nice. And hip shot that is nice. Uh, and this guitar absolutely rips. That's what you can hear on all the Zar material. Right beside me here is my Kemper Profiler. You can't see it because of the webcams inside the Mac, but it's a Kemper Profiler that I use for my amplification. And as far as gear goes, I could probably be here forever, but... <laughs> One last thing. All synths I use is the MicroKorg XL. Oh, nice. So, uh, that's a very short rigged, rigged, rigged rundown, but thanks, man. That's a great question. No, it was. Uh, so, uh, what do you do for your drums then? Is it just done it like digitally on a computer, is it? Or do you actually play the drums as well? The, the drums are programmed, but it still requires, obviously, musical uh, writing. You have to have write the parts, but... For the, mo the, mo the, the meantime, they are virtual, like they're done by via a plug-in, uh, but they still have to be written, obviously. Uh, but I'm contemplating, I've got a good friend down in Cambridge, I know that's a considerable me length away from uh, Glasgow, but I'm contemplating, I'm sending them up here and recording some real drums. Sweet, probably pretty cool, like. I mean, yep. it, it's amazing how music works today. You, know, you can literally, um, there's a project that I'll I'll not say the name yet because I'm showcasing it after we finish tonight. But um, he, he lives in Newcastle and basically put an ad out on the internet and they and someone from Los Angeles. So basically it's a two-man project uh, and they're literally just sending digital files backwards and forwards recording it and they've, they've come up with a pretty good... So he's going to do something like that. This guy from Cambridge, I mean... Because I imagine that pet will be absolutely insane. <laughs> or, or fuel cost. I shouldn't say pet will, but yeah, the fuel yeah. cost will be absolutely insane to get yeah, back off to Cambridge. Uh, yeah, well, part of the process that you mentioned there, part of that is already a reality between myself and Stephen Jones of Bleed From Within. He's our producer. So we bounce ideas and whatever back and forth so it's the same sort of idea but worldwide that's quite a cool idea actually yeah um yeah we'll touch more on stephen jones in a bit because uh i'm quite interested about how that's come about but um so the name czar bit bit unusual yeah what's, well what's, what's the story behind the name the story behind the name is first and foremost i love the way that it looks and it is pretty sweet it's unusual because no other band on earth is called czar nice. x a a r and obviously when i was putting the project together in the early stages i was unsure of a name and i had a list of hundreds of names you know that i came up with and czar just jumped right out of the, the page at me and i said well that's what you want to do to anybody who sees the logo you know you want you want the the name People will automatically remember, or if they look at a big list of bands who are playing, Zar's going to be like, what, what the hell is Zar, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's just because it's so unique, I yeah. guess. Um, you know, yeah. you're not wrong. It, like I say, very unusual name, wasn't it? But it's like it just, it just it does stand out, so it will point out, stand out from a crowd. Um, so yeah, yeah right. I, I really dig it. Um, yeah. Did you? What other names did you have before you, you stuck with Zar? I can't remember now. Do you know that? I know it was only like two years ago, but most of them fitted. It would suit like a track or an album, but not a band, because obviously there's a difference between that. So I still have a ton of them in my old phone that I've jotted down randomly one day, and I think one of them was Ratatoska, which was a little squirrel in North 
mythology. And I think it's been in video games and stuff, and I was like, mm, nah. <laughs> and then, obviously, as I say, tons and tons, and I just, XAR just jumps right out of you, man. I'm like, the branding's there. It looks post apocalyptic kind of futuristic, but vintage if you wanted it to be as well, yeah. and yeah. versatility's there, you know. Uh, and obviously I've toyed with the idea as well, what if SARS like a planet or a, an existence or a civilization and stuff like that as well. Uh, and obviously the versatility of being ZAR myself as a solo artist and individual, or ZAR could be a full band, or it could be like Banksy, you know, like the, the it's like a whole art movement, you know. Mm, I, like I think it. it's pretty cool. No, I like you know? it. Like I say, it works as a solo project as well as a band as well. So, no, no, that's absolutely brilliant. Genius. So, um, how would you describe the music that you typically create? Oh. Because uh. when I was, look, when I've like done a, like a bit of uh, checking like over the weekend, I heard, I've seen some like synth elements in there. With some, maybe it's a bit of Lamb of God, etc., uh, inspirations, etc. But if you had to put a genre on it, uh, most, most of, most of all, probably industrial metal. Although there's only one song that that's full on industrial metal, and that's Destabilized. Uh, initially, uh, it was actually be meant to be more synth driven than it is guitar, but obviously, naturally being a bass and occasional guitarist it's became more of a guitar driven thing with the sims in the background uh but yeah like cyber metal cyber you know cy cyberpunk post-apocalyptic stuff that that was the the original sort of goal uh, it does it does exist in the music but i hear a little bit of dark wave as well um i don't know if yeah, you, if oh, you yeah, know. yeah yeah i love dark wave and... especially in the uh, river of bones anyway i can hear a bit of dark wave on that which is pretty cool but I like how you're taking all these different elements and you've melded pretty much into one, and it sounds absolutely yeah. fantastic. Each, each song has its own flavour, its own direction, and almost like its own genre. Mm. Like, as we know, music is an art form, so the way I'm kind of going at it is not just the music, but the overall thing, but if we want to strip it down to the music, the music's a piece of art. And its own, and and its mu and its music video, and its standalone thing, you know. Uh, particularly this being the sort of early first phase of the band, it's it's quite cool because it's not just one sound. Each song is you can tell it's a Zar song, but it's they're completely different. And I must admit, when I'm playing them, particularly when I was writing them, it's a completely different frame of mind. And arguably that's what art is, you know, a self-expression and, you know, that sort of thing. So, man, like, what, what would you say, like, is the main, like, so what band inspiration have you taken to create Zar, would you say? What, what am I right in saying Lamb of God being one of them? It's, it's, it's unusual that people say we sound like Meshuggah or Demi Burger or Lamb of God because Mastodon... Ramstein and Lord of the Lost. They're probably my three top bands, and that was the, the, the route that I was incorporating. You know what? I never thought of Lord of the Lost. As soon as you've mentioned now that you've mentioned Lord of the Lost, yeah. As soon as you've mentioned it, yeah. I would I wouldn't care as well. Just before we went live, the the missus was listening to a, a bit of Lord hey, of the Lost. So So believe it or not, a few years back, the last band I was in prior to Zar we opened the show for Lord of the Lost in Glasgow and it instantaneously became my favourite band. So to answer your question, I think Lord of the Lost was the main inspiration nice. for Zar, believe it or not. Nice. I touch back just a little bit, um, something that I missed. You, you mentioned that you've played in other bands. Obviously you've played in like full-fledged bands as opposed to sort of any, any bands that you... Who, have you, who else have you played in, like band-wise? Oh, of course, tons that you would never have heard of, I don't think, but, uh, you know, I was a, a gothic band called Seraph Sin, that was the guys that uh, played with Lord of Lost, uh, Siphon, 
who are now called North Atlas. Uh, got another band called Zola. And is that named after the football player? Out of curiosity, everybody asked that, but believe it or not, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're more like kind of Queens of the Stone Age band, right? Uh, so I've, I've played uh, under the banner of rock. I've played every type of rock music you can possibly imagine, and obviously inside of me was never happy. So I decided I want to create what I want to create, you know, and Zara. It's became a reality, man. It's pretty uh, surreal, you know. Sweet. So, at this present moment, we've only got three singles. With our bones, Destabilizer, and uh, Destabilize, sorry, and Final Light. Yep. Uh, so, at the minute, like I say, we've only got three singles. Is this going to be a full record that you're working on eventually, or is yeah. it going to be an EP? Uh, well, the initial idea is to... Uh, compile them all together with some new material into an EP. Uh, I don't know about an album yet, because it's quite early, but really these songs have been released as they've been created. As soon as they're created, they're then released. <laughs> so, so, it's quite unusual, perhaps, but at the same time, it's understandable how early on in the project it is. Originally, obviously, my concept of Zara was going to be a, a band, but Living in Scotland, the you know the the the, the musicians out there, it's to find real right for it, and it's really hard. The more I'm even in it as like a solo project, that's the way that it's coming across anyway. So I'm quite happy just to keep going the way we're going, you know. Yeah, it's fair enough. Um, would would we happen to have a a vinyl release? Oh, excellent question. I've been very tempted to do a limited run. I'm talking like maybe ten copies. Oh, ten copies. Oh, yes. Right, and you're gonna get you're gonna get one, dude. I'll have to. I'll have, patch I'll, I'll, oh, get in, get one. There we go. Everyone has. <laughs> the others will have to fight for the other nine. Then. <laughs> exactly. So I was going to say there'll be, thinking... there'll, be, there'll be quite a few people in this chat. I would imagine that, that would try and fight for one of them vinyls. Like so, get it. Oh, it is. Thank you, everyone, as well. Uh, uh, be first, you one know. Of, one of, one of the, I can't say I'll be the first, but I'll, I'll be one of the first in line for it. So, no worries, dude. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly uh, look into it. But then I've got to choose, you know, is it going to be a single or a 12-inch that holds all the songs? Yeah. So maybe it's an idea to wait until there's maybe an album's worth of material first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even if you can get like a, like a five-song EP, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? That, that'd be, yeah, that'd be yeah, that's, that's the most realistic. We're only two two songs away from that. Because uh, vinyl back in twenty twenty two had its pretty much its best ever year. Do you know what I mean? And uh, that, that like the collectors' items. Do you know what I mean? And if like you say, if you limit it, that makes people want it more because what? And if you don't sell it again, uh, that that oh, I've got to buy this now because once it's gone, I can't get it again. So do you know? What yeah. I mean? well, so well, it would be quite a cool thing to. Uh, seal the coffin of the first era of Zar, you know, definitely by and, and just, and, you know, that, that, that's the, just, the stuff that came out when it was just me, myself, or whatever, you know. I, I can picture the, the, the label as well, just just a black and then just with Zar written on the front cover. Do you know I mean, no, nothing else, just black with just Zar written on I think I'll just look absolutely beautiful. You think so? I think I would, personally. just basically how your banner is at the back, just yeah. exactly like that. just Zar written on it. Honest fact to come up with the logo as well. So everything you see of, of Zar, it's me. Right. <laughs> Bit of a joker criminal mastermind it's, here. It, it, <laughs> some people might think it looks basic, but I th it works really well because you see bands now, they've got a squiggly white and it just looks like a shitload of different trees and oh. stuff like that. You cannot read exactly what they're saying. <laughs> I defy anybody that so, says that doesn't jump out at them or it, it automatically does. says Zah. If somebody's wearing this, it looks quite good. It's clear, like I say, you can read it. It, it, it works. It really Thanks, works. Dude. It was. So, River of Bones. How did the collab with Stephen Jones from Bleed With From Within came about? Believe it or not, it's on, rather he, simple. He's on guitar, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he plays guitar on River of Bones, uh, but I did the intro on guitar, and I did write 
most of the stuff, but he performs the main body. Mm. But, you know, the doobie doobie, the wee intro, that was the first thing I ever wrote for Zar. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it's oddly the, that was the catalyst that really got things going. But to answer your question, the story behind myself and Stephen Jones collaborating together is quite simple. I sent him an email with the wee intro to River of Bones and said, look, I know it's just an intro, but how do you feel about trying something completely different, you know? Uh, and I never thought he would get back to me at all. Obviously, I was shopping around for tons of different people. And Steve said, did I, I would absolutely love to work on this because it's something different, you know? So, so for day one, Zara was designed to be something different, you know? Wow, that's amazing. That's see. It just goes to show if you didn't try, you'll never know. And just exactly. just a simple email and what a what a nice guy just to just to you know help out and stuff like that. That is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I have seen Bleed From Within at uh, Bloodstock um, a few years back and they, they were absolutely brilliant. So no, that was absolutely cool lad. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to I might start trying that myself, just find out for a couple, couple of quick emails. You never know what I might come back. I might get like nothing but yeah, I'll, yeah. Take, I'll take a page out of your book. I might try that sometime. But uh, that's really cool. That's really cool. And, and the song, like I say, I, I've said it a few times in this interview, that, like, he, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. But um, what's, uh, what's, what is River of Bones about? River of Bones is about the sort of, believe it or not, the state of the world during the pandemic. I know that sounds really basic, but when you listen to it, you, you get hints of it, like, you know, is it four rules, we must, five rules we must obey? This is the final say, so it's kind of like a, almost, although it doesn't sound like a funny song, it's a tongue-in-cheek look at the outlook, the outlook of the world and the post-apocalyptic sort of vibes at the time, and nobody knew we would, if we would still be in a lockdown five years later, or some people thought it was impending doom and whatever, uh, you know, it was to consult. It was the first song that I ever wrote myself, so it was a reflection of the time. Uh, but I think, even though we're not in the pandemic anymore, it, the song still makes sense to somebody. I think you know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You know what I mean. You're not just locked locked down. It could be locked down like in your own head, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the inner, uh, the, the inner sort of. Uh, dystopian landscape that's in here <laughs> and, it, and it's quite a, a, a dark song as well so wait did it come from because you're at the time maybe in a, in a dark place yourself or yeah yeah uh as i say uh i it, it was oh uh, yeah probably just in my mind it was unsure of a lot of things for years you know and that was the sort of catalyst for bizarre was that was the thing that was going to change a lot of stuff in it had so yeah you know so story behind uh destabilize destabilize similar sort of idea but it it's it's like a neutral standpoint of the sort of cost of living stroke state of the united kingdom in general uh although it does work for a a universal worldwide thing it was you know, from a new, without attacking anybody or any sort of political agenda, it, it, you know, it, it just documents the sort of cost of living and all that, bled till dry, you know, and the bleeding is even further sort of thing. Everybody in the, the world knows what that's like now. Um, although there was always a cost of living for a lot of people, uh, it's, oh, it's got worse. So the song looks at that kind of dystopian outlook but at the same time it could be a futuristic song you know that's where the industrial sort of cyber elements come is this 20 years in time is this supposed to be on a different planet yeah. it still works you know what i mean i've noticed as well i can see in the in, your, in the right hand side of the corner you've got the sign from destabilize yep it's an original world war ii sign that i bought in a vintage shop about seven or eight years ago and of course when we were writing the song, I do the artwork for all all our stuff as well. Again, I'm the sort of joker in control of it all. Um, 
So I decided, what about taking a photo of the the sign and then incorporating it inside the artwork? And that's and obviously it says danger, roof covering, fragile. Again, it's like a tongue in cheek thing. Although it's post apocalyptic and we're all screwed and all that sort of stuff, it looks at the sort of political and economic uh you know situation in the world right now from a, a a certain perspective but really it's a by saying danger roof covering fragile we're about to get humped really badly yeah but from a tongue-in-cheek sort of spelt point of view you I'm know not, I'm with, I'm with. you know <laughs> i'm with you i'm with you but no that's what's really cool on above that as well is that the river bones uh yep, it's a, a, as well yeah, I printed it off in 12 by 12 and it looks really cool. So I think you're right about a vinyl. I think, <laughs> I think you know. Yeah, definitely. But just, I think it would work really well, mate. It look really well. Well, that's cool. That's absolutely good. And you said you made the artwork as well for River of Bones. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did all three. Uh, and obviously I'll wait until you ask about Final Light to tell you the story about that. I was just about to say, yeah, what is the story behind Final Light? Well, Final Light, again, goes back to a pivotal point in my life, uh, shortly before I, I formed Czar. Nothing to do with the pandemic or anything like that. I was I was really in my lowest point, man. Everybody gets there uh, at some point in their lives. And, uh, you know, I woke up one day and I just assumed that I wouldn't be around for very long because I wasn't very well. Uh, and obviously, as I say, it took years to get to that point, maybe 10 years. And then that's when I decided to change my ways. Uh, you know, I work out every day and obviously I started Czar. I relocated, stuff like that. You know, my, life, my life's basically changed dramatically over the last two or three years. Uh, and Final Light, although it's relatable content for so many different people and Again, the artistic side of it, people can perceive it in their own way. What does Final Light mean? Uh, but for me, the guy that wrote the song, it means, you know, Final Light. I, I was away sort of thing. Um, but I combated that by, as I say, from today, I won't look back. You know, I'm, and that's exactly what I did in real life. And the song documents that. Uh, and as far as the artwork goes, I took that in an old part of the shipyards in Glasgow. Um, and obviously, my ancestors worked there. Uh, and the, the So it's kind of a cool little tribute to them and as well. But the I like the industrial style and the post-apocalyptic sort of vibe of it all in the photo. Obviously, I took it and then transformed it into an artwork. And obviously you're looking up to the sky, final light, but if you're very sort of sharp-witted, you remember Destabilised, the song before, final light, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. danger, roof, covering, fragile. Then you go to final light, the roof's caved in. Right, ah. Oh, that's, that's quite that's cool, eh? Genius, that like. Genius, well done. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing and made it, you know, respect for, for, you know, going in a bit into the, in the past and, you know, the, the dark time and, and, and even better, well done on changing, like basically you turning the life, changing from like you're bad and I mean, look at you now, do you know what I mean, mate? You, you look fantastic. You've got a absolute, uh, three amazing songs. So no, mate, yeah, big on you. Thanks, Steve. Absolutely amazing. Uh that's the short version, obviously. I won't bore you with the details, but that's the kind of short version, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely respect it. it, doesn't, it Thanks, Ed. Thank it's you. It's not easy to do, so, but, mate, you've done it. You, you know what I mean? So well, you, you, you're an inspiration to a lot of people who, who's listening, yeah, well, who, who thinks that that's, yeah, that's they're, the, in, the they're in a dark place. And, you know, you, you, everyone, you know, he, he's proof right here. He's done it. Yeah, if, you're, you're not, if, you're, if you're in a dark place, it's not too late. You can easily turn around. Yep, definitely. It, oh. it sounds daunting at the time, but you'll know intuitively what you have to do. And for me, I put away working out and 
progressing my life for years and I decided no more, man, no more sort of putting stuff to the back burner and all that sort of stuff. We're pressing the trigger, we're going forward and this is it. And it, now it, I'm sick and I'm sitting here, so it's pretty cool. It all depends who you like, who you surround yourself with as well, do you know what I mean? So, yep. y- you've obviously found yourself uh, with a great bunch of people as well, so... <clears throat> no. Oh yeah, you're, you're included, dude, you're included. Uh, as I say, your support we're talking like a full year now that you randomly joined one of my Twitch streams and we've been in contact since and you've been dead supportive. So it, it was you, my you, bandana you, man. I, 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 you know, I can't take all the credit, mate, because basically you, you appeared in uh, Joey Low stream first. Um, he he played one of your tracks. Uh, he the get he played it uh, and I was like, what's this? This is amazing. Uh, he sent us it. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of take all the, all the credit, and got, this got interview, a, uh, this interview as well wouldn't have, you know, he's like Steve. Get yeah, Kenny, got get, get got Kenny got on, so. give a bit of heart there for Joey Low as well, and oh, Lisa Coverdale, and yeah, all the people, everybody who's joined streams, and uh, God, there's so many people. Uh, well, Thank we, you so much. You know, yeah, all day and name and everyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just easier just to thank every single body. Every single person that you know, it absolutely amazing. So, but I, I can't take all the credit. Um, you know, Joey Lowe's also got to take, you know, three quarters of the credit more than me. So, um, shout out to that to that man. He's enjoying his holiday in Spain. So I hope he's yep. having I hope he's having a good time right now. Definitely. But, mm. So, uh, what's been um. What what has been the recording process for these recording songs? Po- yep, it's quite interesting. Uh, I've kept it the exact same. Obviously, we're on the height of a lockdown. Uh, and as I say, it was sending files back and forth to myself and Stephen Jones. That's how we came up with River of Bones in the height of the lockdown because you couldn't be in person. But thanks to technology, we were sending ideas back and forth and creating the song. Uh, so I liked the process that much. I've just kept it the same. So all three songs I've done the exact same thing, apart from, well, the only difference is the vocals. I do the vocals with Stephen in person, but the, everything else is done, you know, in this home studio here, and it gets fired back and forth. Wow, so you've actually like been in the studio with Stephen personally. Um, yep. Oh, that's, that's absolutely amazing, that. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm just from here. Like, I mean, for what I've seen of Stephen, I, I get the feeling he is a, he's a good dude. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I've, I've, never, I've never, never, never met him, never spoken to him, but I get the feeling just from like what I've seen of him on stage, how he carries himself, uh, and like little bits and pieces that I've read in magazines and online and stuff. He comes across as a really good dude. So, oh yeah, yeah. Really genuine guy. I got on really well with Stephen. I don't know the rest of the guys in Bleed at all. Just know Stephen. Uh, but I'm sure we'll meet at some point. Uh, but yeah, really, really great guy, great producer, and obviously he's responsible for the mixing and mastering of the tracks, and he's did a stellar job, you know. So he has uh, he's done an amazing job. He has, yeah. Uh, and he, he's one the bleed from within as well. That one of those bands that's come up through the ranks from Bloodstock. Do you know what I mean? Um, so they're big on the on the Bloodstock farm. Um, I, th- I think, if I ever call, there were you know, Metal to the Masses winners, and then Sophie, and then recently, uh, Main Stage. So, yep. absolutely amazing to them. And, yeah, uh, they've been going for a long, long time. Like, I remember, I think it was Bleed From Within, Bring Me The Horizon, and somebody else, way back in like 2007. So all three bands were quite small. Yeah. Obviously, Bring Me The Horizon are massive now, you know. They are, they are, they are. Uh, and on the topic of uh, Bloodstock, we'll, 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 we'll see an appearance of of yourself there at Bloodstock. Uh, you, I did. I'm, I'm very tempted. I'm just looking at my schedule, but I'd love to be there with yourself and with Joey Low, and we can check out all the bands and say hello to tons of people. It's been a few years since I've been to a festival, so obviously I'll, I've never been to Bloodstock. I usually only went to download, but my favourite festival of all time was Sonosphere. 2014 that was a festival did uh, but uh, yeah yeah my all-time favorite festival is sonosphere 2011 
because I got to see uh, Diamond Head, Anthrax, uh, Megadeth, Slayer, and Metallica in one day, back to back. I know. And it was absolutely it's... amazing. Yeah, and that was my first time I ever saw Metallica live as well. Uh, and to see, see it. Slipknot on that same bill as well. And yep. it's, it, From... I remember it on the Slipknot on the Sunday, they did a two minute silence around two, uh, around two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, on the on the second stage, and just to see a hundred plus thousand people, so the entire just the whole festival just went silent. Like all the mm -hmm. all the rides went like shut off. All the, the you know the stalls just went quiet, and then just to yeah. see a hundred thousand people from the front, just everyone just raised their devil horns and went just sit to go all the way towards the back. It was absolutely an amazing sight. So yep, so twenty eleven will be my all-time favorite but well, bloodstock to me is is home away from home yep as i say this kind of relates to the very first question getting to see him slipknot corn and metallica glasgow green 2014 2004 i was 14 dude that was the best day of my life so that's a wee add on for the first, the first. I missed it out in the first question, but that 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 was a catalyst that said that sealed the deal. That you know, I don't care what happens or what would be in the music industry. I don't, I don't, you know, <laughs> it doesn't that's... matter if I'm Scottish or nothing like that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is what I want to do. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that is a fantastic lineup as well to see. Absolutely fantastic lineup. Um. But yeah, I, I would love to see you. Know, hopefully, you can come to, to Bloodstock. Like I say, if, when you experience Bloodstock for the first time, you'll just want to keep going back every year. And that was yeah. pretty much myself, my wife, and uh, my, my, my brother, and my other mother, or me. We attended in 2014 and we just never stopped going. Sweet. It does sound like a giant sort of family of uh, people. It is. It, it is. You know. uh, I mean, I've come across the occasional decade. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, but, yeah. You always do. Um, but. The majority, so I would probably say ninety five percent of the time, everyone has been absolutely amazing. Just nothing but nice. The vows got time for each other. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> People who you don't even know will probably walk up to you and just just give you a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, so, I, it's, it's about well, when was the last festival I went to? Believe it or not, it was Download two thousand and sixteen. Mm. A long, long time ago. So things have obviously changed at festivals, but the the general aura should be very similar, if not the same. Yeah. I, I didn't get to a festival at all in 2016. Uh, me and my wife got married in 2016, so um, we didn't go. We chose not to go. I mean, we did like a little mini festival in Sheffield, but it was just... I can't really warrant it as a, as a festival, do you know what I mean? Um, and then we'll return... I couldn't get the time off for 2017, so I had to go to download 2017, and, and I made that my last download because I just had a bad. We both were, we just had a bad time. It was just absolute horrendous, full of dickheads, and I just couldn't be bothered with it. I said, "Take, take just take us back to Bloodstock." Um, totally did, totally. Yeah. So, like I say, once you've had your first Bloodstock experience, you'll you'll want to keep going back. Trust us. <clears throat> And and I do and but I'll just point out I, I I don't work or anything for Bloodstock or anything. Like I'm just a big fan. <laughs> you know what I mean, mate? So yeah, yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. We'll all right. give them a punt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm I'm just we'll, we'll start waffling with Bloodstock. I'm totally lost now. Uh, so on the recording process. How, how how does it feel to actually be like just being able to do that? Do you, do you get like creative freedom doing this on your own sort of thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you have uh, there's you there's have no other like, ego, there's no other personality saying oh I don't like it I don't think it's a good idea or anything like that it feels so liberating it's like shaving your head for the first time <laughs> it's so liberating that it, it, it you don't want to look back so I'm kind of like do I really want to go back into a band situation? Would I you? might be playing live even being in the music industry, but I don't, I don't, can't be bored with other assholes. So. <laughs> would, would, would you, are you, is that, is that the, would that be one of the goals to turn this into an actual band? Yes. Uh, but the biggest challenge for any band 
is usually finding the right people, not just people, but the right people. Um, so there's plenty of dudes in Scotland, but they're already in bands or su several bands, and they can't. They've said yes, but I've no time. Uh, so I'm like, just keep going the way I'm going, man. It seems to be working all right, you know. I quite fancy appearing, doing some solo stuff. So why not? Wait, we had a bit of crack on earlier on. I said if you need a triangle player, I'm happy. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll take up the triangles. No <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort something out. You t I'll get my people to talk to your people. Sweet. And we'll, we'll, sort that, we'll sort that one out, well, man. It's I, all good. I am my people, so... <laughs> so it's just so my... There we go. <laughs> but uh, I need a good triangle player. I can, I, can, you know, I can whip some solos out on a triangle for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're gonna ask, ask my wife if she might play bongos or something. Aye, well, 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 we can sort it out, man. Uh, you know, we can do <laughs> destabilized tribal version or something like River of Bones <laughs> tribal version or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely love it. Absolutely, but, but, but in all seriousness, I, I would love to to hear it on a on a band level because I think oh, yeah, it'd be I mean, absolutely great. Multiple people have said I'd love to hear these songs live. I can't wait till. The live show happens and I'm like, yeah, I nearly can I'm dying to be playing live, but there's some, I don't want to say red tape, but there's hurdles before that can happen. So, <laughs> I mean, have you got anyone in mind? Uh, as I say, uh, I do have one dude who's a fantastic drummer and speaking of Spawn is Fear 2014, that's how I met the dude. Uh, but he lives down in Cambridgeshire. There's some other people yeah. that are great as well. So, I don't know. Uh, it might be quite interesting, but how how I go about tackling the live situation is a different story. But I'm more than happy and more, co more than confident to appear live solo. Why not? Yeah, would you, would you maybe it's like an acoustic sort of thing? Uh, I don't know if it would be an acoustic thing. Like, it would still have the same e energy. Uh, I would have all the synth elements and the, the drums and everything there. So you kind of play along the backing tracks? Sort of Without thing. saying that, yes. <laughs> if I was playing the solo, <laughs> there, even if I was playing the guitar, obviously the drums and the synth would have to be done somehow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it would still be a live show, but stripped down a little. Um, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I'm, I would love to do that. You know, I don't know if I know you've got a, a show booked. <laughs> well, now that we're now that we're mentioning it, yes, we do have a little a little gig here in uh, Gateshead. That's happening on the nineteenth of August, and that was probably going to be my next question. Was uh, maybe he's booking? Uh, maybe he's get you down as like a. Oh, I can't really say a secret band if we're going to tell everyone, can we? So. Uh, but yeah, maybe, like, see if you can you can work out three songs for it. Maybe we can we can ask the venue yeah. if we can open, you know, the fifteen minutes earlier, and maybe just have a little have a little little surprise show from Zar. What would everyone yeah. think in the chat who's watching live? What would you think? Would everyone like that? Because fucking I would. Yep, yep. I'm getting the thumbs up from the wife. So yep. I'm, I, I, that's all that matters. That's all I need. Wife says yes. Happy wife, happy life. That's what they say. Oh, I'm, I'm wifeless, so I, I just do whatever, man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone seems everyone seems to be liking the idea, so. Oh, yes. I did. Yeah, everybody watching as well. If Beerbo has me, I will be there in Gateshead in August. There we oh, go. There I, I will go. be there. there even if, uh, well, will it be myself or with a whole band? Star will be there if if a beer bowl would like to have me, and you guys oh, want to be. I, I think I think I think everyone would like to have you. I think personally, yeah, yeah. I think cool. I think, I think we'll, have, we'll like you say, my people will contact your people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, well, let's get let's see if we can get that sorted. Eh, see if we can yep. get that sorted. Um, so I think we're coming close to to pretty much my questions before we turn it over to the to the live viewers this is where it gets nervous because <laughs> god knows what they're going to ask <laughs> um but what is um 
what's coming up in the future? Or is there anything that you would like to plug? Uh, other than Final Light, if you haven't heard it already, in fact, if you haven't heard any of the Zar songs, please watch the videos, because I think watching the videos gives you the more of the, the full-on art, art concept, but they are available on Spotify also, and every platform out there. So please, please, please give us a listen and enjoy. Pretty please. And cherry on top on YouTube. Yep. Go and check them out on can't, three songs, 15 minutes of your time, if that. Go and check them out. Absolutely, three bangers River of Bones, Destabilize, and Final Light. Absolutely amazing. Thank so, you. before we do end, we have time for a couple of viewer questions. If you can use the redeem uh, in the redemption area, please, that would be uh, spot on. So, while we wait for everyone to come up with their questions, uh, I, I, I normally ask everyone, or a few people, this opinion. What is your take on uh, venues? Taking uh, well, Some of them are taking 15%, some of them are taking 25%. What is your take on this? This is a question for me, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of understandable. Because uh, music is a business, so somebody somewhere is going to be taking a percentage. And as the old saying goes in the music industry, if you're not getting paid, somebody else is. But I don't know. It's, I'm 50-50, to be honest, because the amount of people that complain about it, but at the same time, they, they're aware, if they're involved in the music industry, the people are taking cuts, uh, merchandise, ticket sales everything so that's the game as it were mm. uh, but some of it's a bit greedy particularly at the moment but you know yeah. it's it's just the venues have got to survive promoters have got to survive the people that work at the venues have got to survive obviously the bands need to survive as well but it's, you know my problem is that it's crushing the smaller bands that's the problem uh, I would agree I would agree it's but as I say the smaller bands uh it is unfortunate, but at the same time, through time you get you get used to being part of the music industry, and you go, you know, you're gonna get bummed somehow. The old ACDC song, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. There's some lyrics in there that are very true. Excellent. Well, we've gotten we've gotten one question, yep. and and I had a feeling that this was going to be asked. <laughs> what is your Greg's order? Greg's order, uh, as I say, I live a healthy lifestyle these days, but I do like a cheat day. Uh, I think the last time I ordered Greg's was about six months ago, because obviously they do delivery now. Oh, I got that's dangerous. Four, four Yum Yums, two steak bakes, uh, and eight donuts. Wow, wow. <laughs> that is one epic cheat day. <laughs> that was a complete secret up until now. Right? Oh, just out with yourself now. <laughs> Everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, that question came from Bags for Dyson. With without a doubt, she will always. Yes, it did. It's a great question. <laughs> she is. She is absolutely brilliant. Oh, we've got another one. So it's Matty again. Uh, how would you like to be approached as a band to grab an interview? Like. Yeah. Anytime. Just. Just. Uh... You know, contact myself uh, for any of the socials. Our email address is rband at gmail dot com. It's me that will be at the other end. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, or, but or he's asking, you know, even if it was a band, I'd be the manager way? anyway. So, so would, you prefer, good. would you prefer socials, emails, or if you're represented by a, a PR company, maybe? Um, uh, I, don't, I don't have a PR company at the moment, so. Uh, just, just come straight to myself. So, do you, if you have a, a an email, maybe, or, or yep. do, do, do you want to do you let let the people know what your email is? Uh, at czarband at gmail dot com. Yeah, so that there be there be one way for you, Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. No, no worries. Uh, oh, now he has another question. Are you ready for this? Ultimate pop song to cover. So if you oh. if you cover a pop song, what would you like to cover? I I love cover. The Lord of the Lost already did it, so I won't do it. But 
Oh. I'll answer two two songs, right? I'd like to cover uh, Duran Duran. What's the song? The Lord of Lost did it during the live stream and it was epic. Uh, Ordinary World, I think it's called. Uh, but that's already been done. So trying, like, Zars always a thing where nobody else had kind of done before. So I would like to do Babylon Zoo. Spaceman. Mm. A, a serious consideration of myself. I've never witnessed any other band cover that. Nice. There we go. Uh, do I have anything else on this end? Uh... <laughs> Question from Bloody Ranima. One of those limited vinyls is mine, right? Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, may, I might stretch it out to 50. Uh, you might, might have to, because I was going to say, you're, uh, saying 10, because uh, I, I can imagine there's, everyone in this chat is going to be fighting for it. And I'm sure I've seen, during that question when we were talking about it, I'm sure I've seen something about someone was going to come to my house and steal it. So <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm really flattered. Thank you. That's brilliant. Do we have anything else for Penny? Before we end, folks, before we end, one more question. Hoi, one more. Make it a good one. Someone. What have you got for you? Come on, where's the questions? Come on. I can hear, I can hear the, the cogs turning. Someone's got something. Where we going with this, folks? We're waiting. What's next? Uh, there we go. From uh, Cameron Bendy back. What's next? Oh, Cameron, how's it going, dude? Uh, what's next for Zar? Cameron played a little part in, and it will appear on your screens very, very soon. Uh, I don't know if I should give the whole thing away. Or I'll just, I'm halfway there. Cameron very kindly did a rendition. A narrative rendition of Final Light, and it will be available on April the 24th for you guys to enjoy. It's mind blown. Oh, wow. I, I was off my, my seat when I heard it. So, thank you so much, uh, Cameron, and everyone over at uh, Primordial Radio. You're all legends. Thank you so much for your support, man. Wow, he did a cover of Final Light. Yep, I nearly fell over, man. I nearly took a heart attack because oh, wow. when you hear this, you think. Wow, that deserves to be in like a movie. I said to Cameron at the time, I said, "That's an Oscar-worthy performance, man. That is that blew my mind." Wow. <laughs> hey, Cameron, when that when that is look due for release, please please send it my way. I would love to hear that. I would love yep. to hear that. It will be it will be available uh, on the April the twenty fourth. I don't even. <laughs> it will be available. <laughs> Sweet. Well, we're just getting two new two questions in. One from Ali Cat. Okay. Would you ever come to the USA if you can get a oh, band? Oh, in a heart a heartbeat. I would be in the USA in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I would love to come see you guys in America. There you go, Ali Cat. Get get your people. thank you, Ali Cat. Get your get your. Whereabouts in America? Uh, <laughs> Whereabouts just, in America is Ali Cat from? Just, just from New York. Oh. New, New York, really cool, man. No, I've she, never been to New York, so she's, uh, I'll, she's, I'll she's one of my one of my moderators. So, oh, that's quite cool. Mm. Yes, does a fa does a fantastic job. So I, yep. Ali Cat, get spread the word of Czar in in New York for us. <laughs> More people, the better. And I think uh, in bloody Panama wants to know what football team do you support. It's a classic question that people ask, particularly Scottish people if they're from Glasgow. Mm. I hate football, to be brutally honest. There, there as a result. Particularly there when you live in Glasgow, it's, uh, you know, or you're from Scotland in general. Football isn't a positive subject, man. Mm. But there's some great teams in England. I quite like Arsenal because of Johnny Rotten, but I don't actually support a team. Well, there so, we go. There, there you go. go. Sweet. Well, I think... Uh, Fountain of Namath, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. He's asked, uh, What countries have played your music? Do you know? 
Do you know of any other countries than the UK have played yep. your tunes? Believe it or not, the final light in particular, but they've all been played in Canada, Australia, America, Germany, Europe, right? But final light is most popular in Mexico. That is, this is mean Democrat, um, you know, it's been played over a thousand times in Me Mexico. So the Mexican people wow. are, are really love their metal, I guess. Wow. So uh, before Bags for Dice has to, to, to leave, but just says uh, she, she was a great interview and wishes you the best of luck with your future project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. She's, she's an amazing person, Bags for Dice. Lovely. Lovely. Yep. Um, so I think well, that, that's, that's it, Kenny. I think we're good. I, I, I was amazing. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for, for, for uh, having me. It's, no. it's Sarah's very first interview, so I take my bandana off, man. Thank yeah, you so much. I, I take my head off, but I'm frightened of the shine, and it'll probably glare the camera. Do you know what I mean? With me baldy head, so <laughs> <laughs> keep the hat on, especially with the especially with the black and white effect, black and white effect that we've got on. So that's absolutely sweet. So I thank you very much. Kenny, that was absolutely amazing. Anyone in chat, and we've already said it a few times, go and check out uh, the three songs. You can catch it on all major streaming platforms. Go and watch the, the videos uh, on YouTube for River of Bones, Destabilize, and of course, that absolute banger of a track, Final Light. It is absolutely amazing. Um, don't leave though folks because right after we close off uh, i'm going to be playing some tunes so hang around for a little bit and we'll be taking some uh, viewer song requests and if, if kenny's able to, to hang around with us i'm sure you'll be able to uh, play some tunes for her no doubt yeah no uh, worries sweet well thanks again for doing this mate you can give no. you if you Anyway, if you want to watch this back, you'll be able to watch it on YouTube, hopefully by tomorrow evening. Um, or if not, you can, if you want to, if you know anyone who would want to watch it, share it on YouTube and you can find us here. I'll put our link in the chat for everyone. That's my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I'll take you to where this interview will be posted, hopefully by tomorrow evening. So, Kenny, thank you very yep. much for getting heavy with us. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, check it out, Zara. Thank you so much. Excellent. Right. See you soon, guys.